What is good? We're back. We got the man Austin Abbott in the house. I'm your host, Casey Myers. We're going to hit you with a little 2025 Superflex Tight End Premium Rookie Bach for your pleasure. A little uh, treat to send you into your Thanksgiving uh, week weekend with your with your friends and family. Uh, we're going to rattle through two rounds here. We're going to do one through 12, pick for pick, and then we'll have a little open discussion and then same through uh, round two, just to give you an idea of kind of how we're going to do it. So Austin, you take the first pick. Let's get it. Who you got? Absolutely, Casey. What's going on, man? Always good to hear from you. Always good to talk ball. Off the rip, I'm going to take mm. Ashton Janty at the 101 to no surprise. Casey, you're up. Got to, got to. All right, now at, at the 102, I'm going Tet McMillan. Uh, I think no surprises so far. How about you? Back to you, Austin. Who you got at the 1-3? Yep. I think this is where it gets a little interesting. The 103, I'm going to take Travis Hunter here. Oh, that's me breathing fire. Uh, all right, I like it. 104, I'm going Cam Ward. Uh, 105, who you got, Austin? Yep, and I'm going to follow you with the quarterback position. 105, I'm taking Jalen Milrow. Ooh, Austin's out here spitting fire right now. Uh, I'm going to go 106. Uh, let's go Shador Sanders. So little QB run there. Uh, how about what are, you, what are you doing at 107 here, uh, Austin? We got another running back. We're going wide receiver. What are we doing? More quarterbacks. What do we got? Yep. 107, the RB2 right now in my rankings. I'm going to Marion Hampton here. Uh huh. I like it. I like it. We'll have to double back on that. Get a little Mar- Marion uh, Hampton love in. All right, 108. I'm going to go Luther Burton the third. All right, back to you, 109. Who you got? Yep. 109. Again, RB3 right here for me, Quinchon Judkins. I like I like the RB value here. Oh, yeah. I love, love the RBs in this draft. Uh, 110, I'm going to take my first running back here. Not the one I have ranked first, but the first one I'm taking in this draft. I'm going to go Caleb Johnson out of Iowa here at the 110. All right, back to you, Austin, for the last pick of your last pick in the first round. Who you got? Yeah, 111, Nick Singleton. Mm, Love it. I almost took him uh, instead of Caleb. So Uh, 112 to finish off the first round. I'm going to squeeze a tight end in here for tight end premium. going Tyler Warren out of Penn State. For sure, their best weapon. This dude's a lot of fun. It'll be really fun to see the discourse and see where he ends up in uh, tight end premium. I think I think it's gonna be a lot of love for Tyler Warren when this thing heats up. So that concludes round one. Let's jump back into it a little bit here and, and discuss some stuff. I think pretty chalk at the first two, Ashton uh, Genty and, and Tet McMillan. I think those are most people's one one and one two. I don't think the quarterbacks have quite emerged to be the first picks just yet and that can change as we get through the cycle here yeah. but you went travis hunter at 103 so what's your thoughts there because he's he's a little lot of lot of high end you know asset there but could be potential problem of we don't exactly know where he's playing they're projecting that he's going to go wide receiver here just too good at that position yeah i mean he's the epitome of unique right travis hunter i i still don't know what position he's going to play in the nfl you don't know neither does consensus uh nobody does to tell you the truth man i i think maybe dion and and travis himself you know i actually i don't even know if dion does man i'm I'm not gonna lie i i don't know regardless uh but that's about it right it's it's a very well-kept secret right now and it'll be interesting to see how money plays a vital role in this conversation moving forward right i put casey i pulled up the average salary in the nfl and I, granted i know travis hunter by no means is average but the average salary for a wide receiver is just under 2.3 million the average salary for a cornerback is just under 2 million so yeah. something to keep in mind yeah the, i would say the high-end receivers probably end up getting a little more but we got like a little bit of a shohei otani uh thing on our hands here with travis hunter right you know, I don't. I think a lot of people are like, you're going to have to pick one. I, I, I'm honestly, I think he's going to lobby to go both ways, at least playing. You know, half of the defensive snaps. I don't. I don't. I think that's just how he gets his his jollies off, right? I mean, I don't. I think he loves lo- from everything I've seen and heard and read, and he loves football. He breathes it. He doesn't d- doesn't really do anything else. He keeps himself out of trouble, and he just gets in there, studies, works out, gets treatment, and uh, and crushes it. I mean, currently. He has 70, oops, sorry, 74 receptions on the year. Uh, that's good for fourth overall out of all of the receivers mm-hmm. in college football, 911 yards and nine TDs. And this guy just moves differently than 
a lot of the other dudes on the field. There's he just does some def- gravity defying stuff out there. So, I mean, I get it, man. I, this, this might be a. I wasn't thinking Hunter here, but I mean, you know, I think it's going to be quite the battle kind of moving through this rookie season of where does Travis Hunter go? And I mean, I, I, and I don't think draft capital is going to help us because I think whatever he's doing, the draft capital is going to be great, right? Yeah, whether it's for dynasty rookie drafts, NFL draft, I mean, he's going to be going so early, right? I I, I think he's going to go. I think it's going to be top five in the NFL draft. I know we're far out, right? And uh, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people in the comments could be yelling at me saying, "Of course he's going top five. But I'm just saying, you know, there's we see it every year, man. Teams will reach on quarterbacks, obviously pushing down other players in the past, like whether it was Joe Alt falling a little bit further than he probably should. Because I'll tell you what, man, Joe Alt probably felt like a pretty damn good value to Harbaugh at five mm-hmm. last year. So like yeah. just just throwing out one recent example. But uh, Casey, do you want to pivot? Talk about another player? Yeah, let's in, let's in- move to these quarterbacks because after Hunter, we caught a chunk of quarterbacks. I had the first pick kind of going into the you know four five six area i took cam ward as the first quarterback off the board it was a coin flip between him and sanders i like those two guys the most shador showed me a lot from last year to this year just taking a beating and then you know a lot of criticism and and just standing there and 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 kind of taking it and growing and learning and then the beginning of this season they they take the loss to nebraska and they finally figure out this offensive line and oh my if you Protect Shador Sanders, you see a excellent prospect out there. I mean, you know, that's kind of how this works. But he does have the legs. He can make every throw. He can kind of put it wherever he wants. Very good athlete. I, I just – it was it was really close to me. I'm taking Cam Ward with a little bit more experience and a little bit less of, of unknown. I, and I think that's almost silly to say at this point. But I think Cam Ward's proven to me at this point that he could play quarterback at a pretty elite level and, you know, you know – We've seen some quarterbacks who have played a lot in college football recently have some pretty decent success pretty quickly uh, moving on to the NFL. And Cam Ward's one of those guys coming from Washington State and then going to Miami here. He's going to have an interesting finish to the season. Obviously, the season isn't over for any of these guys. I hope we get to see Shador in the playoffs. Uh, Hopefully, they can get past Kansas this week. I don't know if this will come out this week or not. That should be a fun game. I think that's an arrowhead. Uh, And then, you know, Cam, Cam Ward... Can he make it past, uh, you know, SMU or whoever they're going to play in potentially the ACC championship there? Uh, maybe it'll be Clemson. Who knows? I really like the pro prospect of, of Cam Ward. He's, he's so he's almost too calm, cool and collected back there. Sometimes he, he's like, oh, get, get rid of the ball. And then he, he just kind of figures out a way to slide and just and, and kind of get that ball where it needs to go. Uh, finally caught up to them kind of being the, the cardiac canes there uh, this past week against Georgia Tech. But really like what I've seen from Cam Ward at the Washington State days. He wouldn't he would kind of melt and not finish games. He's finished a lot of games in Miami in this year version of Cam Ward. So I got Cam Ward as the first quarterback. Now, you took Jalen Milrow in there. So I, I probably I got to go Shador over Milrow. I probably would have knocked Milrow down, you know, towards the end of the first round because I love the tools. Right. And I, I hope Milrow actually comes back this year. I hope he plays another year with uh, Kayla DeBoer and they develop them even further. Cause I do think you've seen nice growth from the end of last year throughout this yeah. year from him. I don't know that he'll get the coveted draft capital that you love coming out. I think that might be, a, might be a later first round pickup, which, which could work out for, for a quarterback, you know, being, you know, maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers take you at the end of, you know, the end of the first round there. So that, that you know, Lamar was worked out great for him. Uh, so give me your thoughts on why to take Milrow there at five over Shador. And would you take him over Cam Ward as well? Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Right now, my my QB rankings. I, I do have Cam Ward at one, right? I've I've got Milrow at two, and then I have Shador at three, and it's close, Casey. Right? I, I'll tell you what, I'm not infatuated with any of the three quarterbacks. I'm not necessarily low on them. 
I just don't love them, right? I, I don't I don't think I'm I'm head over heels for any of these quarterbacks. I'm pulling up the 2025 NFL draft order right now, man. It is so interesting. I know we are only heading into week 12 of the NFL draft. Man, it's never too early to look at Tankathon. <laughs> you know, just, Vegas. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great landing spot right that that kind of feels like chalk but then again we got we got a long ways to go i mean we see danny dimes just get promoted to the qb4 on that (laughs) roster right the giants are currently picking fourth overall this could potentially be the jaguars third year third time in the past five years of picking with the 101 they currently hold it again how how God only knows how their GM still has his job. God bless him. I wish how, I could be how everybody there job. hasn't been fired is mind boggling. It's incredible. Uh, you, they, I would say you're safe with picking a quarterback in the top five. If you're the Jags and just paid Trevor, I don't think they're yeah. going to, I don't think they're going to pull that trigger. So C- correct. Uh, Jay Wayne could do a better job GM and the Jags. I mean, yeah. come on, man, what are we doing? Uh, I mean, ten- Tennessee two overall, are they sticking with Levis? Like Casey, I don't mean to get off track here, but like, it's real interesting, man. You got Cleveland at three, obviously the whole <clears> fiasco <throat> with Watson. There's just a lot of teams, man. I mean, Carolina at eight, did they consider it? It's a real question. You know, the I, Jets at seven, like these are all valid questions. I'm yeah, telling you, man. I'd when- love to see Cam Ward in Cleveland. I feel like that'd be, oh. that'd be a great fit for <laughs> what, what they have going on yeah. there. And we'll get back to this conversation a little bit later in, in you know, throughout this yeah. episode, but I'll, I'll start yapping a little bit more about Jalen Milrow. I know that's what the initial question was. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're seeing him you know, now in his fourth season at Alabama, his fourth collegiate season. We're seeing him take steps forward. Now he did that for the first three years. This current year does feel like a little bit of a step back would you agree uh, in comparison to last year right like he had 23 touchdowns last year now he's currently sitting at 15 six I interceptions think, i think he's i think he's he's ha- it's been up and down this year but I, I i like some of the the little things that he's doing better this year from- let me let me rephrase that i agree with you i think if you're watching the tape if, if you're actually watching the film and seeing like you mentioned like like uh, he's cleaning up a lot of the smaller things in his game I think that's wildly appealing. Uh, I know that the stat sheet isn't quite as good as we would like it to be, right? Uh, then again, you got somebody like Anthony Richardson. He never crushed it at the collegiate level, and mm-hmm. he still went fourth overall. So, like, there's absolutely a path for Jalen Milrow to be drafted, you know, top five, regardless of him putting up, you know, incredible stats. It, it, it really doesn't matter. I think people are going to buy into the physical traits, right? The abilities that he has, yeah. right? Six two. You know, he's I wish he would put on a little bit more weight to tell you the truth, but he's he's still got the physical traits is really what I'm getting at. And uh, I just I believe in Jalen Milrow probably probably more than I should. But uh, I'm I'm in you're, on him right now, man. You're, you're in, I, I like it. I, I don't think he's you know, obviously DeBoer didn't have a choice of who to take. That was the guy who was there. I don't think he's mixes well with kind of what DeBoer wants to do at his core. You saw a guy like Penix really thrive in that with a, a bit more of a cerebral uh, pro style approach. But I, I do think Milrow is is getting good leadership and reps with somebody like DeBoer because uh, I, I think Alabama is going to come and just be a wagon under DeBoer for a long time. Anybody being critical of what they're doing is crazy. You have the best college coach maybe ever yeah. uh, come leaving there to fill those shoes. You have to be a, an incredible human being to even dream of that. You want a guy in between that really sucks. So, you know, you should take a little bit of a, of a, of a nosedive down for a second. You get all these guys to buy back in and then you start building your own program. But I think, you know, Alabama has been pretty damn solid this year, you know, moving off from arguably the best coach in college football history. So I don't mind it. Give me a, give me a little Omari on Hampton as the, as the RB two here. Uh, Cause we haven't dove into these guys at a crazy deep dive level yet. This will all change obviously as we go through the process um, this is for my, at least for me, this is from doing light dives on these guys and, you know, obviously watching college football over the last few years and, and kind of being familiar with these guys. Judkins, not number two, Omari on number two. I just want to go back and say one thing. I apologize. Sure. Uh, Jalen Milrow, his weight is fine. I, I was thinking of Shador Sanders. I think he's right around that 215 mark. I, w- I wish he would beef up a little bit. I know Mil- Milrow is closer to like that 225, 227 range. His weight is perfectly fine. So before I get sharp in the comments, I just, <laughs> Love it. Just, want to, just want to be clear. But back to Omarion Hampton, man. I mean, here's a player that I've been very bullish on for, for 
at least two years now. I wish, you know, I, I wish he could have come out last year. I think he would have been the RB1, hands down. I know that this class, uh, the 2024 running back class, we're starting to see you know, a lot of the day three picks look a lot better than what consensus initially thought. But uh, mm-hmm. back to O'Marion Hampton, man. He uh, he could have been one of the top dogs last year w- without question. And he's, he's going to be one of the top dogs this draft class. In Again, a much, much more stacked running back class. I mean, 1,500 plus rushing yards as a, as a sophomore. Uh, I mean, this year he's he's hell in a few days, Casey. He's going to be north of that number. Uh, he's he's knocking on the door. That sitting at fourteen hundred and twenty two rushing yards. I mean, he's got over fifteen scrimmage touchdowns in back to back seasons. But if if you just watch the film on a Marion Hampton man, uh, it's it's the vision, it's it's the footwork. I mean, it's the hands. It's the play style that I love about him, right? That workhorse, that three down, you know, that 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 big frame, six foot, you know, two twenty plus. He's he's just a a dog, man. I, I I love what I saw with him, you know, playing with Drake May, and uh, it, you know, it's it's really reassuring to see that without Drake May, he's still getting it done. Like it it doesn't matter. Like I I think he's just a damn good player, and the NFL better recognize that. Yeah. I like it. Luther Burden was was is my wide receiver too right now. Five eight two oh eight. I really love him. Not having like a killer breakout year. They they've they've got some other weapons there, but what he's doing, he kind of fits the mold of the receivers that I've been really liking uh, recently. Just kind of a yak guy can ad lib like crazy. This past week against South Carolina on fourth down, just need it, gotta have it, mm-hmm. and he goes and scores a huge touchdown to try to to put to put Missouri ahead there. Is he your wide receiver too, or where are you stand there right now? I mean, obviously, again, this is kind of, it's not even December yet, but right now, what are you thinking there? Uh, so Luther Burden right now in my rankings, I've got him as my wide receiver three, right? He's okay. he's behind Hunter, right? Travis Hunter and, yeah, and that makes sense. man, he's gotten lower in my rankings. He's, he's kind of, I think, I think right now, as it stands in the middle of, of November, I'm lower on him than consensus. Still like Luther Burden. I've been a little disappointed this season, right? And it's not even just the stats. It's There's a handful of red flags with Luther Burden that, that I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you like he's going to be a bust. He's not going to succeed at the next level. But uh, I'm just not quite as high on him as, again, most, most are. All right. I like it. I got Caleb Johnson at 10. You went Singleton at 11. I could I could easily swap those without a problem. I went Tyler Warren there. I think he's the best tight end in the oh, class yeah. right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, he's he's just ridiculous. He could do a little bit of everything. He's had some monster games with Penn State. Throw him. They'll even run him uh, at, the, at, the, at the running back position here and there. Love that guy. Singleton still got a ton of respect for me. I, th- I think he's great. Uh, they're, they're running two backs over there. You know, I, I think he's a really good pass catcher as well. So, I like that. Let's run into the second round here. All right, Austin. Yep. Let's do it. All right. Two, one, you, you, you starting this one off again. Who you got? So with the two, one, I'm going to take Trevion Henderson. Nice. Like it. All right. Two, two, I'm going Emeka Ibuka. Got two Ohio state guys right off of here. And I think some people might argue that they need to be in the first round. Uh, so who you got a two, three here at the two Oh three. I'm going to take Ollie Gordon. All right. Uh, two, four, I'm going Trey Harris, Ole Miss. Missed a couple games these last few weeks, but really like this guy. Uh, 205, who you got? 205, Evan Stewart. All right. Wide receiver action from Oregon. I'm going 26, Jordan James, running back, Oregon. 207, who you got, Austin? 207, Isaiah Bond, speedster. Isaiah Bond. All right. Uh, 208, I'm going Loveland, tight end, Michigan. This is an interesting one. We'll, we'll come back and talk about that. Two oh nine. Who you got? You sniped me there, man. I love I love the Loveland pick right there at the two oh eight. Two oh nine. I'm taking Kyron Lacey. All right. Well, LSU. You know, it's a good bet to grab a LSU wide receiver. <laughs> Late in the uh, second round, not bad. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, two ten. I'm going Xavier Restrepo. The U. That was uh, almost Quinn Ewers there. I, I, I think this is good value on Ewers. 211, where, where are you going? Yep, 211, Quinn Ewers. Could, couldn't pass up the value. All right, and 212, I'm going Dylan Sampson, uh, Tennessee running back. All right, let's kick it back up to the top. Travion, maybe falling down a little bit. Is, is that too low for you? Should, should he be in the first round? How do you feel about Travion by the time you know the draft rolls around? Can't, he can't not come out this time, right? 
Yeah, right. Unless that NIL money is that good, man. No. So, Casey, when you asked me that question, you're referring to the NFL draft capital, yeah. right? Like where he's projected. Man, I, I think it's going to be somewhere early day two, right? I, I don't I don't think we're going to see him go in round one by any means. Yeah. That, that would really catch me off guard. But, uh, you know, Trevion's gotten it done year after year, right? He's He's got the frame. He's got the size. He's got the production. And he's going to have promising draft capital. I feel safe with him, man. You know, like when I'm looking at the our rankings right now, at the top 24 players that we're yapping about today, like there's a lot of guys that I'm like, you know what? Like Luther Burden was one of them. I'm not necessarily, I don't, feel the word I'll use is safe. I don't feel quite as safe as I want to. I just, I feel safe with Trevion Henderson. I I, I think it's just because I've seen it for a long enough period of time. Like yeah. he's got a very long body of work of a lot of success. I feel like this two, one, I was, that's what I was thinking the whole time. Two, one, two, two, that Henderson, a Buka picks right there. I just, I feel mm-hmm. like those are super safe. I, I, I could take them higher. Uh, I kind of know what those guys are. Both good players, both really good prospects. Uh, been that way for a while. Either one of them could have came out last year and, and been a pretty high draft pick. And, uh, you know, I don't I don't think either one of them's really done a whole lot of damage to themselves in my eyes. So Ali Gordon, though, he was probably the one one maybe coming into the year for a lot of people. What are your thoughts on him? Why It feels like everybody's kind of falling on Ali. And I, don't, I know the production hasn't been quite as high, but Ali Gordon seems like a guy that that you would be into. I feel like Ali Gordon's your type of guy. Yeah. And he still is. That's why I can't quit him. I'm still in on him. I mean, again, I think I said this on a past podcast, Casey, but like you don't fall ass backwards into north of 2000 yards and 22 touchdowns, you know, as a sophomore. Right. Just it, it, it's it's not an accident, man. That That's, you know, consistent production game after game after game, you know, play after play to, to put up those type of numbers. I mean, come on, man. Ollie Gordon. Yeah. It, it, we see a lot of these players, right? They, they peak, whether it's their sophomore, junior year. And then they regress the following year. Like it happens to so many prospects and it's okay, right? It's okay. It's not the end of the world that they're going through something. They're fighting through injuries, whatever it may be. I'm still very much in on, on Ollie Gordon. Yeah. All right. I took Trey Harris right after that. And yep. like I said, he's, he's missed some time, but even in missing time, he's still like fourth overall in yards in the entire college football with 987. He's, he's averaging 16.7 a catch. He's got six TDs. This dude just gets it done, man. He, he's, he's a big, I view him a little bit as like a possession guy, but he can certainly get down the field and obviously do uh, attack yeah, you in no. a bunch of different ways. You know, I, I could see him, ending up being a little higher. He might end up being some people's wide receiver too. I don't think a whole lot of people are going to have anybody but Tet as the wide receiver one. It, it'll be an interesting battle here, I think, between the next three or four wide receivers to see who pans out that way. And I could see Trey Harris being you know, a first-round guy all day by the time we're done with these conversations come probably August by the time we're done with these conversations. But draft time, April, May area, uh, where, where we start to figure out, get a couple more pieces of the puzzle. So you went Evan Stewart, which I, you know, super fast guy, uh, speedster there out of Oregon, but neither one of us took Tez Johnson there. What are your, what are your thoughts between those two guys? It's so funny, man. Oregon is just, wow. I, I didn't see, or, yeah, I did not see this. I, I'm not going to lie. Like full transparency, you know, Dylan Gabriel, their quarterback. I, I mean, he's been playing some of the best ball, uh, at least. I, I know last year he was playing real solid. He wasn't for Oregon last year. I, I'm just saying, like, like he's starting to produce much, much more. He's also been in college forever. And Casey, is this correct? You can fact check me on this, man. Is uh, did Dylan Gabriel have the record for most passing touchdowns in NCAA history? 137. Is that correct? Oh, uh, sorry. I just pulled it up. Case Keenum is number one at 155. Dylan Gabriel is second at 142. Okay. Dude, that's crazy. That is, that is so that is so wild. Like when he's I think been of, playing a while and I don't hate it. He's got some legs. <laughs> I, I know. And I, again, I don't mean to get off topic. Like you think no, of yeah. Bo Nick, someone who was in college for eternity and produced for a while. 113. And then you got Dylan Gabriel about to hit 150, right? Like that's crazy to me. But no, Tez Johnson, man. I, I, I like Tez, right? And and I've liked him for a few years, fighting through an injury. You know, he could be sneaky. He could be a nice dart throw, but I think that uh, Evan Stewart is is someone that I feel better about. Right, he's I'm fine with the size. Right, we're we're seeing the gradual improvement. I think we're kind of entering a new. I don't want to call it a new era in Oregon. Like they're just 
that man, I just I didn't see this coming. I'm not gonna lie to you, Casey. I, I th- this team it's a pleasant surprise, right? Like obviously Oregon loses a a lot of big players last year, right? Whether it was Bo Nix, uh, whether it was uh, Bucky Irving, uh, whether it was. Uh, oh my God, uh, uh, Troy Franklin. I'm sorry. I was, you know, I love Troy Franklin. I was way too <laughs> bullish on him last year, but uh, man, they just, they're just a wagon, right? Like it doesn't even matter. I uh, just, uh, that's yeah. impressive to me when, when the yeah. team is able to still to actually improve after losing a lot of those valuable players, you know? Yeah. You get, you get some Stewart's a little bit bigger, a little taller than, than Tez Johnson is um, yep. both really fast guys. Both have, you know, had, had their spots throughout their career here. Uh, but I, I like Evan Stewart, man. He, I think, I think, I, well, like you said, what they're doing in Oregon is is awesome. And then I took Jordan James right after that, who's I, oh I, yeah, he's an excellent running back. Let's talk about Wadlin for a second because I think he was the the kind of the, the the tight end one coming into this. And I don't think, I mean, obviously the quarterback play and a lot of turnover there at Michigan has kind of maybe slowed things down for him a little bit. But Tyler Warren is just so damn good. But I still think Loveland should be getting. A ton of love as well. No pun intended. You know, everybody, it's hot in the streets for him right now, man. Everybody's uh, really getting high on him and and I don't blame him, right? Like, it, it's so funny, right? Remember Kyle Pitts, the GOAT prospect? Mm-hmm. And then you remember Brock Bowers, the GOAT mm-hmm. prospect? And no, I'm not saying Loveland is, is going to be a better pro or is a better prospect. I don't think that highly of him, but it's looking pretty good, man. It's looking like he's tight end one by, you know, a good margin, right? When you remember Brock Bowers having uh, a mile and then some on the next tight end, in, you know, last class, maybe it was Ben Snot, whoever it may have been. Uh, mm-hmm. According to consensus, but you know it's it's starting to feel like Loveland's 100% running away with it, right? Like, and and we'll we'll probably get into you know some more tight end talk because this is you know always super flex tight end premium talk that we have course, with all these course. graphs. And right? I think this is a pretty decent tight end class. It seems like it's shaping mm-hmm. up to be that way. There's mm-hmm. there's four or five that I think you can get kind of excited about. That being Mason Taylor from LSU, Fanning Jr. from Bowling Green, the dude from Syracuse, uh, Gadsden or whatever his name is. Uh, so there's some there's some fun ones, and then of course Tyler Warren and, and Colston Loveland, and I'm sure hit me in the comments with some of your favorite tight ends. But I, I like it. And then you went Ewers at the end. I know he's not your favorite. I kind of like Ewers. Um, I usually go a little higher on him here, having a nice little back half of the season. So I like like to see how the back half of his season plays out here. Uh, and then I went uh, Dylan Sampson to finish it off. Obviously scoring a million touchdowns, playing some. Good ball right now. Obviously, Genty's got 26, Samson's got 21, and Caleb Johnson has 20. And then Samson averaging less than those guys are per touch. Uh, he's got 5.6. He's got 1,200 yards. Playing really well in his own right. But really, we got a loaded running back class here because we didn't even take Damian Martinez, Devin Neal, yep. ETN, uh, Brashad Smith from SMU's playing some good ball. Rocket Sanders looks like he's back. He looks he's been looking <laughs> yeah. fucking great for South Carolina down there. Jackson out of Arkansas, uh, the Kansas State guy. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. He's good, and there's probably some more in there that that I haven't even mentioned. And that dude, we and we drafted a handful of them here. So I think we're in really. We, we kind of talked about this last time we met, or maybe the time before that, of just forecasting that you know, while there may not be a whole lot of spots terribly open open right now these guys are going to force their way these running backs this class is going to force their way into and, and reshape the landscape of kind of the running back situation in the nfl i think i don't disagree with a single word you just said i want you to kind of i know i took quinn ewers here and as we you know wrap up this episode can you kind of sell me on him man like for for me it's the consistency that worries me. It's the fundamentals that are are huge red flags. I, I think he's sloppy. I think the footwork is all over the place. Uh, the arm angles, God only knows what, what arm angle is going to come out on each rep. There's a lot that worries me about Quinn Ewers. I still think he's going to find his way into the first round of the NFL draft. I, yes, it might be mid to late. I am mm, expecting, yeah. um, that's where I'm expecting, right? Like maybe early 20s. We'll see. We're still far out. But what do you love about Quinn Ewers? Like, sell me on him. I'm just, you know, I've obviously, you know, watch a decent amount of college football. And then especially, you know, watch the marquee teams. And then, you know, I can fall in love with some some players and teams. And, and you know, what it was Washington for a few years there. You know, but, but been watching Texas for a little while. And I, I feel like a lot of people have shit on Quinn Ewers and just mm-hmm. basically like he's terrible. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know that he's terrible at all. I, I feel like I think a good word to 
foot is, is the inconsistency would be the thing that would, I think, bother some. But I, I just, you know, having A.D. Mitchell and uh, Worthy and J.T. Sanders there last year and Brooks, and he's played pretty well in some some bigger spots and some big games where I've, I've really liked his pull. Obviously, the Georgia game this year didn't go well. He got benched. He was coming off that oblique, and I don't think that oblique was quite right. Um, I think it was yeah. an oblique. And I think he's just kind of getting a little healthier right now. I think a lot of people in – college football are questioning right now, like kind of what is Texas, how he finishes down the stretch here, I think will, will help answer some questions as long as he can be healthy of, of kind of where he's at. And when he gets into these big marquee matchups where he needs to go down there and win some games and put some drives together, it was too little too late against Georgia, which is probably the biggest matchup they've had so far. Looked better in the second half of that game, looked awful in the first half, uh, but he was coming back from something and hadn't played for a while. They tried to put Arch in there to calm things down. You know, he, he's got a, a legacy guy behind him. He's kind of been all over the place. But I think in the system with the guy who's coaching him in Sark, they do a good job getting explosives. He does a good job of getting explosives. I think he's a decent quarterback who has a chance to continue to grow. Uh, he was a highly touted prospect. So consistency for sure. And then let's see what happens down the stretch. I'm okay with him being down here right now. I was probably a little higher on him, but I've definitely cooled off a little bit. You know, there's some other quarterbacks that people like right now. You know, they, Jackson Dart's been playing some decent ball. He's not my favorite, but uh, he's all right. Curtis Rourke from Indiana. People like like him. I'm sure I'm, you know, Aller if he comes out. Nussmeyer uh, from LSU. People like the Nuss. You know, so we'll we'll kind of see how that all plays out. Uh, Nussmeyer seems – I'll fall in love with him, and then I'll be like, God damn it, you can't do that, bro. And I guess a lot of people <laughs> will, will say the same thing about Quinn yeah. Ewers. So how about uh, – go ahead. No, I was just going to say last thing on Quinn Ewers is like there are just times where his arm talent is just so good that yeah. it, his fundamentals, they simply don't matter. Right. His his arm angle, whatever it may be, like his his talent, it, it just gets the job done at when it shouldn't sometimes. And that's what a lot of GMs are going to fall in love with. And that's why some teams are going to, you know, be in on him and willing to, you know, put the chips up, chips in on him and draft him at, you know, whether it's mid to late first round. So I just wanted to give him some love, right? Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. A couple of receivers that didn't get drafted. We, we talked about Tez Johnson for a second. Felton from Maryland's getting some love. Uh, and then there's a guy at Utah State Royals that some people like. And then there's, you know, there's a ton of people. All There's a ton of receivers that'll, that'll end up making some hay here. Nick Nash is currently leading uh, the NCAA in, in yardage right right behind our uh, – or right in front of our boy Ted McMillan here, who's just you know just that that freaky kind of guy. That's what kind of puts him up there uh, at that you know right now the unquestioned one on one. We'll see how galaxy brained we get and and how how much we're gonna tear Genty and Tet down and try to figure out ways to wiggle guys in front of them. Uh, and maybe it'll be warranted, but a lot of times it isn't. You know we go into these things trying to just be contrarian and and find a find an angle and you know it's not there, but. You know, some of my favorite running backs, we talked about them for a second, but I love Devin Neal out of Kansas. ETN yep. didn't get mentioned. I've been liking what I've still seen from Rashad Smith from SMU. But like I said, I think Rocket Sanders is, is having a nice resurgence here. People were loving that guy for a minute at Arkansas. Uh, I think he'd been banged up a little bit. He looks really good out there with Sellers uh, in the USC crowd right now. I hope South Carolina gets into the playoffs one way or another. I just think they're, they're a really, really fun team. That defensive line is so much fun to watch. Sellers is a lot of fun to watch. He's kind of coming into his own. I, I, I like what they're doing. Uh, obviously, we are in South Carolina. I have no affiliation to college teams. Grew up in Pennsylvania. I, I got, got a soft spot for Penn State, but in the Northeast, we don't. I, I was a pro guy my whole life. I just happened to live in South Carolina. So, uh, but I, I, I do like the coach at at South Carolina. Casey, these uh, the playoffs going to be good content, man. I mean, now we have 12 yeah. teams in the college football so playoffs, fun. right? And you've got Boise State at 12, right? I would love to see Ashton Janty in one of the sure. biggest spot, you know, one of the biggest stages. You got Colorado sitting at 16. They're knocking oh, on the get door. Get them in. Get I, them I mean, in. I mean, come they, on. They could win the conference and then they're in. You throw know? Yeah, throw Tennessee or like Ole Miss out, man. But you, you got to put you just just for content purposes. We got to see Shador in, in Colorado, regardless of your opinion on him. Like, like I just want to see all the biggest prospects selfishly, you yeah, know, in the I college agree. playoffs. So I agree. I love it. All right, let's wrap it up. Let's get out of here. There'll be plenty more of this for your pleasure. Of course, he's Austin Abbott. Two B's, two T's, and two F's on the Twitter. You can find him at Austin Abbott FF. Uh, you can find us at at the FF Dynasty or not, whatever. 
we got a, I got a Patreon. Austin has a Patreon. The FFD has a Patreon. I'm, I'm the FFD's Patreon. Uh, five star review. If you're listening on the pod, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get all. We're going to be ton of college content coming at you here. We got three or four more weeks of fantasy before the playoffs start, and then you degenerates will want all of the college talk that you could possibly get. Uh, from now until April. So keep it locked and loaded right over here with the FF Dynasty. Me and Austin are going to be just knee deep in the prospect talk here uh, in the very near future for your pleasure. Austin, again, always, always a pleasure, my friend. Absolutely, man. Always happy to talk ball, especially the rookies. Uh, I got to tell my fiance, I'm probably not going to talk to her for the next six months because I'm busy. You know, priorities, Casey. Yeah. Gotta start studying this class more than ever. So that's right. Uh, and we're currently planning my bachelor party in Fort Lauderdale. So that's been fun, man. We're uh, we're Thank getting you. after it. We're gonna probably I think we're going to do draft weekend to tell you the truth. Uh, that's a good weekend. I, I for think we're going to I think we're going to do draft weekend. So hopefully we come away with some really good content, really good energy with all the boys together. It, it's going to be a good time. So, yes, sir. All right. We're going to get the FF out of here. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.